Welcome to our August session of Tea Time with Kids Regio. Feel free to drink some iced tea instead of a hot beverage that you usually would have with you at the moment, but be sure to follow us very closely in our conversation because today I am very delighted to welcome Sanja Jovanovic, Program Policy Manager at the Film Center of Montenegro. Hello, Sanja. Hello, Anna, and thanks for having me. So good to have you with us. Thank you so much. And I'm so excited about our talk today because last month in uh, July, we talked about Iceland, another very small country, but probably totally different to yours. So I am so curious to learn about Montenegro. Let's start with our very first question, our very traditional first question. What are you drinking and what does your cup look like? Well, um, I'm more of a coffee person, but I love making a natural tea uh, from various herbs. And I can't imagine a winter time uh, without my ginger lemon tea. And I like drinking it also ice cold during these Montenegrin long hot summer days. Uh, so today I'm drinking this homemade ginger lemon iced tea and it really helps me stay hydrated on these uh, at these 40 degrees. <laughs> I'm drinking it from my uh, favorite uh, mug. This is green mug and I uh, can call it now my green film mug. So cheers. Very good. Also, Kids Regio has green as its own color, even though it's very light green, but we're totally matched in colors. And also um, I'm drinking cold tea because it's summer, it's warm. Um, so perfect, perfect match there. Um, you already said it's very warm in Montenegro in uh, summers. And um, my, or my second question, not my first question, would be about the general atmosphere in your country. Usually we start with the general production atmosphere, but I feel like about Montenegro, we have to start with the general atmosphere and the country itself, because I don't know much about Montenegro and I assume other people also don't know much about your country. So and enlighten I, us. I always like to introduce my country to, to foreigners. So uh, yes, Montenegro is a small, beautiful country on the Adriatic coast and it is blessed with a splendid nature of high mountains, lakes, uh, crystal clear rivers and sandy beaches. Uh, its international name is Montenegro and it is an Italian uh, translation of its original name Cernagora, which means uh, Black Mountain, Black Dramatic Mountain. And uh, it is a multi-ethnic state uh, with so many specificities uh, in a, such a small space. And um, Montenegro actually was a part of Great Yugoslavia and we were a part of what once was a great Yugoslav cinema and uh, many Montenegrin authors wrote and uh, directed a significant, a significant number of Yugoslav uh, films that won prestigious uh, awards at international, uh, mainly European film festivals. And uh, then during this uh, famous Yugoslav war and breakup in the 90s, uh, the cinematography of Montenegro was totally shut down. Um, and only at the beginning of the uh, 20, 20, uh, 20s, uh, things started to change slowly uh, with the help of uh, Ministry of Culture of uh, Montenegro and its budget for film, along with uh, the emergence of this uh, young artist uh, from Faculty for Drama Arts in Cetinje, and also with the emergence of film production companies, uh, film uh, in Montenegro started to, to grow. And uh, so first Montenegrin films were made and foreign productions companies uh, started to shoot in Montenegro. And finally in 2015, um, the cinematography law was adopted and in 2017 uh, this film center of Montenegro was established finally. So uh, the center today manages film fund and organizes calls for support for film projects in various phases. 
uh, also the center supports complementary activities like film festivals, like research, like um, uh, educational workshops, etc. And uh, Today, we, we can say we have a solid budget, uh, a firm film fund, and a modest but uh, continuous film production. And we co-produce with countries from the region and Montenegrin authors gain ever-growing recognition in Europe. Uh, we are also part of your image of audiovisual observatory efforts and many other respect of, uh, respectful institutions and organizations. And, um, Last in this year, we experienced uh, some uh, pause because of COVID and also due to some restructuring at our government. But overall, things are quite in favor for Montenegrin cinema. That sounds good. And wow, that was a very, very brief and good overview of where you came from, where your country comes from, where film production comes from and where we are at the moment. Thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Well, we always have to, to make this introduction when we speak about Montenegro, yeah. So you rehearsed it very, very well. Um, thank you. Um, so um, when we prepared uh, for this talk, when we first met, actually, this is the second time we are meeting. Um, feels like a festival uh, connection that we're having. Yeah. Um, you told me that you have a strategy that runs from 2018 to 2023. And that includes various things among that film education, for example, which I find very cool that you have that in the, in the general strategy. So let's maybe start with a question about film education in your country and about this uh, strategy that you're having. Okay, uh, well, uh, the Film Center of Montenegro, uh, when it was established, uh, we created uh, with the Ministry of Culture this uh, document called uh, National Program for Film Montenegrin Cinema Development. Uh, from uh, 2018 to 2023, uh, where uh, our priorities were identified. And among them, the question of development of film education was uh, identified as one of its priorities. Uh, for the first couple of years, we, uh, we were focused on learning and experience exchange, um, mainly with the countries from the region like uh, Slovenia and their Kinodvor and Croatia with their Croatian Audiovisual Center, uh, who uh, both um, have this long and successful tradition in developing film education for children and youngs. Um, in Montenegro, at the moment when uh, film centers started working, uh, we had only uh, four cinemas, uh, two commercial multiplexes in uh, Podgorica, the capital of Montenegro, and Budva, this tourist center at the coast, uh, seacoast town, and uh, two uh, small cinemas in two other towns. So. Uh, first, what we wanted to do in order to know uh, which way to go, uh, from where to start, uh, we conducted uh, a research. Uh, we asked more than a thousand uh, children and uh, young people from 6 to 18 years old what they watch, where do they watch films, how they watch, how they choose what to watch and with whom they watch uh, films and uh, similar questions. And uh, the answers provided us with um, a valuable insights uh, on some advantages, uh, like uh, the one that uh, children really love to go to cinema and watch European films. But we mainly became aware of uh, uh, the rather sad situation in which our youngest audience uh, choose what to watch through the social media and that teachers in schools are not active in developing uh, their uh, viewing habits. Mm -hmm. So uh, now that we uh, have these results, we are even more determined uh, in our intention uh, to provide children and young people with uh, quality content and also to provide uh, proper conditions for experiencing a true film experience in the cinema. That is uh, why we uh, started two years ago uh, with the, the, this process of uh, cinema digitization uh, in uh, every municipality in Montenegro. 
Uh, so for now, we have already uh, four cinemas digitized, and the idea is to create this uh, cinema network with a, a regular repertoire of which 50% uh, uh, will be in hands of the Film Center of Montenegro. And uh, the Film Center will uh, provide uh, uh, the content, the uh, latest films from Europe, and uh, the obligation of the cinemas on the other side will be to organize uh, screenings for uh, schools in their municipalities. Uh, that's nice in theory, and we really hope to, to manage in our intention. And uh, uh, the center, in the meantime, uh, continued with support for uh, and help in organization of educational workshops for children with uh, festivals and uh, uh, our NGOs in Montenegro. And we are very, uh, very uh, uh, proud uh, to, to support the first film handbook for children between 12 and 14 years old that will be distributed in schools uh, this fall. And also what is important the, uh, is that uh, Film Center of Montenegro started with uh, calls for support for films for children uh, uh, two years ago, and uh, the film that gained the first support was developed uh, through Kids Kino Lab this year, and the shooting will start in uh, August, in the in the middle of the August. So, in overall, we are really trying to make some progress, and I think that we are actually doing well. <laughs> It absolutely sounds like that. And you answered so many of my questions already. So first of all, I love that you did research to actually then base a strategy on that. I mean, that is that is my dream for every country in Europe. Um, so, so that's really cool. I, I would love to see um, the results if they're available in, in a language that I'm um, able to understand. And, and then also you already talked about cinema. So you already said that you have very few cinemas in Montenegro. I mean, how, how big is the country? How many inhabitants do you have? Approximately? Uh, uh, 600,000, around 600,000 inhabitants. So yes, uh, like uh, four cinemas uh, uh, is quite a small number. And we really are trying to, to develop this uh, cinema network that will help us in our intention to have this uh, film literate society and that uh, every school in every uh, town in Montenegro has an opportunity to bring children to experience film as they should. So, I mean, that's great. Uh, it's always um, hard to build something up completely from the bottom. But on the other hand, that gives you the possibility to have a strategy and now connect this building up of cinemas with film literacy and doing something with schools. Um, that's great. Once upon a time, every town uh, actually had its cinema, but uh, for many decades, uh, they were shut down and they are in, in harsh condition. And we are trying to restaurate them and the cinema halls and uh, from our side to digitize the, the equipment for, for screenings. And when you say that you want to achieve that in every municipality, um, what does that mean? How many municipalities? That's a really hard word. Uh, well, what are well, you? Well, twelve. Okay. Yes, that's uh, that's uh, it, it's not a high number of municipalities, but yeah, it you know it, there it, we will in that manner we will cover whole Montenegro. So I mean that's yeah. good. and you say that's not a huge number, but on the other hand, also Montenegro is a small country, so um, you always need to see that in relation to each other. You can't have as many cinemas as Germany, yeah. obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that would be weird. Um, and you also already talked about um, production or production schemes or funding schemes, a, a very tiny little bit when you talked about um, children's films. So maybe um, let's start with this with a more general perspective of production landscape and then go into detail um, more about this children's film funding scheme that you're having and the cooperation with Kids Kino Lab. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, well, uh, we, we started with calls uh, in 2017 when the Film Center was established uh, and uh, we organized support for uh, various phases of the film project. So for script development, uh, for project development, uh, production. Uh, also, we have support for uh, works in progress. 
and with uh, and we, for minority co-production. Uh, also, we organize calls for uh, support for complementary activities such as festivals and research and uh, various uh, educational workshops. It's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for basic yeah, like everything. Uh, really, you have everything under your roof. That's yes, and we are really proud uh, with this call for support for minority co-production, and we have a really good cooperation with whole region, and uh, uh, many Montenegrin projects also receive support from uh, regional funds in uh, Croatia, Serbia, Bosnia, Slovenia, Macedonia, and Kosovo. So uh, we are really proud that we uh, managed to, to, to establish this firm connection with uh, every ex-Yugoslav country because we were the, uh, uh, we, uh, Montenegro was the last country to establish the film center in our region. And we uh, also the experience from uh, every uh, film, uh, uh, film institution in the region was a great help for us. And it's so good that you listen to others and that you do research. So it really looks like a good foundation that you're, that you're building on. And then on top, you also have something especially dedicated to young audience content. So where did this come from? Why do you have the special funding scheme to support children's films? Well, because uh, uh, also once upon a time, uh, we had this uh, uh, rich uh, uh, content production, uh, children, uh, content for children production in Montenegro, especially uh, uh, from our uh, national TV broadcaster, uh, Television of Montenegro. Uh, and also for a couple of decades, uh, um, we haven't uh, produced any uh, film from, for children. And uh, we thought that uh, it, 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 we must uh, uh, begin to, to support uh, ch uh, films for children as uh, it is a par also part of our strategy. And when we talk about uh, film literacy and film education without uh, national production of uh, children film, it, is, it sounds uh, like an nonsense. So yes, we, we have to have a, a, a solid um, production of uh, content for children. And also we have to uh, uh, to bring to our cinemas uh, quality content from Europe. So I think that uh, both of this national and international side, it is important for children to, to see quality content. And uh, as I said earlier, this uh, project that we supported, the first project that we supported, uh, made by our young um, director Gojko Berkuljan and our young scriptwriter Anna Vujadinovic, uh, gained uh, uh, the support from Film Center of Montenegro, but also it was uh, developed through this uh, Kids Kino Lab uh, uh, last and uh, in, in the beginning of this year, and uh, the authors uh, were really satisfied with the help they gained from the lab and its tutors and uh, we are also are quite satisfied with our cooperation and we will i hope continue to 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 be partners in this uh, beautiful project i hope so too and for everyone who does not know about kids kino lab there is, I think it is the April session on Poland because Kids Kino Lab is organized by the New Horizons Association. And I had a talk with one of the board members of the New Horizons Association, Maciej Jakubczyk, in April about Poland and also about the Kids Kino Lab. So feel free to jump into the April session and learn more about this beautiful project. Um, but let's focus um, on, on Montenegro and let's keep on talking about Montenegro. So you already said it's important for you, for the film center, for, for the ministry to offer your population, especially the young audience, quality content from your own country and from other European countries. Meaning you also need distributors to bring this content to your country. Are there distributors in Montenegro? Are you working within the region because your country is so small? How, how does that work? Yes, yes, Anna, as you said, the Montenegro market uh, 
uh, as you can imagine now when I introduced Montenegro to you, uh, it is too small and uh, we mainly have distribution and sales companies from the region. Uh, what we uh, but uh, what we wanted to do and what we discussed earlier uh, is uh, and it goes in line with our story uh, about film education is to have uh, films that uh, come to Montenegro dubbed and titled in Montenegrin language because uh, now it's not the case we uh, receive films from Croatian or Serbian distributors and they are uh, titled or dubbed in Serbian or Croatian but we want to have them in Montenegrin language uh, so uh, Films in Montenegro are uh, titled, uh, and we liked, uh, and we think that it is important for our people to hear other languages, and that is one of the charms of Europe and living in Europe. So, for youngest audience, uh, we need to have films dubbed, uh, and also what is important is to have uh, them localized, uh, as uh, our children really uh, need to understand uh, the films correctly, and. Um, also, what is uh, important that in this way, uh, we will open a whole new part of the industry. And we will also have our actors active in a new field here. Yeah. So I think that it is also ambitious project, but uh, something that we needed to, to do a long time ago. And uh, hopefully, and now it is the right time. It's, it's so interesting to hear because I always say from, from a German perspective and growing up with um, children's films that were always dubbed in, in German, I never heard another language and when I grew up. I always say it would be so nice to have the original version uh, with, with subtitles. I mean, obviously, as soon as children can read, so up until a certain age, a certain age you need the dubbed version. And you say it the other way around because you always grew up with maybe not the original version, but then dubbed in Croatian or in, in Serbian. And for you, the, your own language is missing. So that, that's exactly the contrary from what I experience mm -hmm. here in Germany. That's interesting. Yes, but also with the, we only watch dubbed films uh, at, at certain age, as you said, for children that cannot read. But once that they can read, the films are titled. So they are hearing, they will continue to hear other languages. But what is important here is uh, when our children uh, start to talk, they need to hear when they are watching um, cartoons or films for children, they need to hear their own language in order to, to speak correctly also. Yeah, and to identify with their, with their own culture. They don't only need the language, that's, that's one important part, but also national production to, to see themselves, to see their own cities, their, their own uh, surroundings. So um, yes. I, I can just wish you a lot of luck so that everything that you're having in your strategy at the moment will, <laughs> will turn out fine. Um, you already mentioned um, your television uh, channel in Montenegro very uh, briefly before. Do they have a children's program of some kind? Uh, not so much, not something that is uh, that we, we can speak about. Uh, as I said, we had uh, uh, during 80s uh, a really serious uh, program for children, but unfortunately that is not the case uh, since uh, 90s. And I hope that also Television of Montenegro, which has uh, this uh, uh, quite good fund for uh, production and investing in co-production, will start to invest also in uh, programs for children. Yeah, I hope so too. Let's bring them uh, to a table to drink tea with the two of us and uh, yeah. let's convince them to do exactly that for the, the children in your country. Um, so, so there's one other always big question for, for every other country, for the bigger countries, which is um, what about festivals, markets, industry events? And since your country is so small, how does that look like? Do you have like an international film festival in Montenegro or? Yes, that is something that, uh, that is uh, 
quite present in Montenegro. <laughs> Although we are small, we have many festivals here. Uh, almost every town in Montenegro has one. And uh, yes, the most famous is this international uh, film festival in Herzegnovi, this uh, seacoast town, which is dedicated to contemporary European cinema. Uh, we also have this beautiful festival in Podgorica named Underhill Fest, uh, which is dedicated solely to, to uh, this uh, uh, feature of no, full length uh, documentary uh, films. And we also have festival dedicated to human rights uh, in Ulcin uh, Cinema Fest. Also Podgorica Film Festival uh, it, in, happening in Podgorica, which presents uh, world production. Also, uh, uh, we have this uh, at the northern part of the country, this um, uh, Mojkovac Autumn Festival. But uh, even though there are many film festivals, uh, we have none uh, dedicated to films for children. And uh, in the last two months, there has been an, initi an initiative from um, Kotor, that is also a seacoast town, a beautiful UNESCO protected old town uh, at the coastline. Uh, uh, in Kotor, there is a theater festival for children. And we thought that it, it would be nice also to have a film festival for children there. So uh, that makes sense. And uh, really that is something that we owe to our children. And also this festival, this theater festival is happening uh, during the summertime. And we also thought of that that uh, maybe at the end of the summertime it would be nice to have also this uh, film festival for children uh, when they are still on vacation and uh, when they are children from elsewhere so they can enjoy uh, watching films uh, at the open air cinema which is beautiful in Kotor. It's such a great idea to do that at the end of summer break because usually you you never have festivals in summer break because everybody is so scared that you don't have the schools to invite to your festival. But going from the other way around, doing that in a in a holiday region so that you can reach more children also from the rest of the country and with their families, not with their schools. Um, great idea, um, great holiday option that you're that you're offering possibly there in the future. We hope so. We'll 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 see. <laughs> that sounds sounds very good mm -hmm. i think i am through with my questions do you have anything else that you want to let us know about montenegro well maybe something that is uh, attractive to to foreign production companies that uh, uh, seeks for beautiful locations uh well uh, because montenegro has always been interesting for foreign companies uh, because of its beautiful landscape and this uh, kind of natural scenery and a lot of famous films were shot here and since uh, 2018 the film center of montenegro uh, activated the program film in montenegro uh, which provides a cash rebate uh, for foreign investments and um, uh, a producer must spend a minimum of 100,000 euros of qualified expenses uh, in order to get a rebate of 25%. And uh, this is applicable on uh, feature films, on television films, uh, television series, uh, documentaries also, and animation. And of course, everyone who is interesting can find more about uh, it in um, our uh, brochure. Uh, this nice yeah, brochure that is downloadable at uh, our website, um, fccg.me, or can simply visit uh, this uh, filminmontenegro.me uh, website where they can find all necessary information. Perfect. And um, I forgot to mention earlier, especially when you said all those names of the festivals and all those different cities, we're going to put a list of things that we have been talking about under the video. So if you want to know more, also on the report, we'll put a link about that there and about those different festivals and all the things that Sanya mentioned, you can find it under the video. Feel free to reach out to Sanya or to, to me, myself, um, to, to talk more about this if you have more questions. Um, and Sanya, thank, thank you so much. I learned so much about Montenegro. I now wait for the Children's Film Festival to be set up and then I plan my summer vacation on Montenegro, I would say. 
uh, you, you must come to Montenegro in summer or in winter time or in spring or in autumn. It's, it's a beautiful, we uh, really have a beautiful weather here. So please be our, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, I enjoy talking to you um, very much and I wish you all the luck in the world building up all those uh, nice things that we have been talking about and I hope to see you soon somewhere at another festival. Um, we'll see. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you everyone who listened in to Sanya and me talking about Montenegro. I hope you are as intrigued with this country as I am now. My next stop on the fourth Thursday of September will be Italy. On the 23rd, my guest will be Elisa Giovanelli, head of the educational department and young audience programming at Cineteca di Bologna in Italy. We are looking forward to welcome you for a cup of tea, as usual at 3 p.m. Central European time on our YouTube channel, and any time after that to rewatch as often as you like. See you soon! <music>